Hi and welcome to another episode of Under Sugarloaf TV. Today we are talking to John O'Donnell about the CM number no. 2 mine out the back of West Walls End. So let's go ahead and talk to John now. We're on the side of uh, seam number two down car shaft. This is the shaft where the, um, the ventilation went down the mine. Also, the men traveled. The uh, up car shaft is where the coal came out of, plus it was considered to be the second egress. So that was the other way the men could go up and down the mine. Have to have two ways in and out of a coal mine. Um, up, up on that rise up there, you can't quite see it now, but there was a line of coral trees and the old steps were there right up until well they probably might even be still there but as a kid you could see the coral line of coral trees and remnants of uh, brickwork that was the office area um, the surface mine area would be there where the um, lantana is and the upcar shaft where the fan is, that'd be over there next to that tree. You can see it's capped off. That's the way the coal would come out and be processed and binned and, and go out on the train. And further over is the bottom dam that supplied the water to the mine and to the washing plant, if they had one. And above that dam is the top dam. And that gathered the uh, excess water and storage to make sure the mine would have been drought proof. All this area was cleared. That's a lot of over overgrown now, but even those trees there it went right back further. And um, Mick O'Donnell used to have his cattle out here, kept it beautiful. That was many years ago in the 60s and 70s and maybe 80s. But it's, it's changing. Everything's been overgrown, and it's sad because that's our mining history. As I said before about West Walls End number one, seam number one and number two, best practices, first class mines, world best, high production, and really, really made this area probably the most rich coal mining area in the country at the time, if not the world. And I'm privileged to have been part of it, the ancestors. So John, with the, the dams, there were the two dams. Yeah. Uh, the large dam at the top was to drought proof yes. the, the, the coal mine itself. Yes. And then the second dam was where they actually fed the water over to the to the. I'd to say the coal. so, yes, yep. yes. That would be the uh, main catchment area would be up the top where the water run off the mountain but the uh, the actual two dams would have been a guarantee of uh, having enough mine of water to sustain the mine if there was a long period of uh, no rain which sometimes happens and there was a spillway between the two concrete spillway yeah, yeah it used to yeah. run from one down to the other yes beautiful area this is where we used to come as kids mushrooming rabbiting Blackberrying, brilliant. And again, a lot of this area now has been, I suppose, desecrated by uh, the four-wheel drive enthusiasts. Yes, yes. yes. It certainly changed since when you were a boy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think the mine stopped working in the, uh, I can't give you the exact date, but I know Dad started out here when he was 14. He was born in 1924. So, you know, late 30s, he started out here working on the surface and gradually went underground to become a coal miner. And CM number two shut when? Would have been in the 40s sometime. I can't remember it, but well, I was born in 1950 and I can't remember it uh, operating. Well, it was always just a big paddock from when I was a little kid. 
So it's got to have, it must have shut sometime in the 40s. And according to the plate, the the shaft was actually sealed in 1993. Yeah, prior to that, there was a brick wall around it, same as the one at West Walls End, and it wasn't wasn't good. They finally got things done properly, because there used to be a a, um, a brick wall around here, and I assume you could jump up on the brick wall and go down the shaft. Plus, there was a pipe came up, and uh, with methane gas in it, and people used to light the damn thing up which is very, very dangerous. So what they've done here is what they should have done a lot earlier. Sealed it up, capped it off. Well, thanks again, John. That's, again, wonderful information for, for people in the area. And uh, if you ever get a chance, come out and have a look. It's here. Well, we hope you enjoyed that episode of Under Sugar Loaf TV. Remember, if you have any news, any events, any articles, or even any charitable organisations that you would like to give exposure to, we'd love to have you on the channel. So please go to undersugarloaf.com and look for the Contribute tab, and you can enter the details there, whether it be an article, news, an event, even a job. Or you can contact me at info at undersugarloaf.com. So that's it for today. This is John Byrne signing off for Under Sugarloaf TV.